Hey guys, Doc from the Go Hog, and today we're out here. We're running the mini excavator and doing a couple things. Uh, I'm just gonna get right to it because we've been kind of busy and we're battling thunderstorms. We've had thunderstorms all last night. We're supposed to have some rumble in today, so we're gonna run the mini. We've already found some nice gems just looking through the dirt, so let's go shoot. We've got the new piglet set up, and the one thing I'm trying today is, is we're trying a clay claw on it. And I've actually got my clay claw from the Raptor, so it's too big for it, so I just screwed it into here. But it seems to be working okay. The main thing is, is you know, you gotta have a lot of GPH with these things. So it works, I'd say, pretty good. Uh, we've got the Mini with the extension on it today. We're running it with, we're running it with one of these. The WX-15 from Honda water pump. It's this little uh, two and a half horsepower engine that's real portable, perfect for this Mini. This thing, I forget what it is, like 4,500 GPH or something, but a uh, perfect little pump for it. One and a half inch lay flat. After the one and a half inch lay flat, we always go to some kind of like flex hose or dredge hose into the Mini. Of course, I tape it here just to keep these from, because I don't like to glue those. We've got this uh, flexible flap here now on the new piglet. This allows some of the water to go up underneath, but still create a pool down here. We've got a little more aggressive matting up at the top. We're running this at maybe about a nine degree, and then I'm flattening it out. I'm flattening this section out to about a, uh, about a five degree almost. So this is real calm water. I'll show you it running. After we run this and shut it down, maybe I'll actually run the multi-sluice. I've got it set up in recirc mode, which you can do in places where you can't discharge into a creek or you have to, you can't have any discharge. You can actually set this multi-sluice up, just like I have it here. And today with the multi-sluice, since I'm just going to be running it on and off, I've got this little battery, which is really cool. You know, I've got a little five pound battery, four pound battery. Um, this is... This is actually a scooter or wheelchair battery, I believe. Get the wire out of the way. I don't know how long I'll get out of this. I'm assuming it's about, if I wanted to, I could get 30 to 60 minutes off of this little bilge pump. So we've got, uh, this is like almost half a yard of dirt. It's about 20, about 20 buckets or so unclassified and I'm going to show you running this new piglet uh, this thing as far as a mini goes this unit moves more material than any mini on the market you don't have to classify you can move a lot of dirt and I'll show you that here in a minute dump it try and try and pour it a little smoothly that's one of the things you want to do is when you're feeding a header box instead of just dumping what you want to do is just yeah just give it a little bit of a shake and do it again it's like a conveyor belt that's why you have conveyor belts because it's a slow consistent feed rate rather than this big dump rather than big dump try and trickle it in you can get more dirt and just stand there and just sort of trickle it so get a big shovel for it so get a big shovel full. Now he can just sort of just sit there and trickle it. Of course, he's got a square shovel, which doesn't help. So 
And what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to keep this slurry pretty consistent. It's a high slurry viscosity. All right, hold up. So now I'm going to come in here, move my rocks around a little bit. They look fine. But you can see I've got pretty fast water here, and as it comes down, the water starts to slow, and I have a fairly slow water over here. Again, this is more of that dual zone technology where we've got these two sluices, and I can run them at different pitches. So I've got this one set at a nine, this one at about five. Aggressive, more aggressive matting, less aggressive matting down here. show you is the nice thing is, is you don't have to classify with this unit. You've got all kinds of large rocks in here. Leave them in there till they're clean, lift up your clay cloth, let them run out, they'll all fall at the back. Sit here, we can look for some gems, a piece of obsidian. Now, if you're in a heavy, heavy clay area, here, take that gem. You're gonna always have these. These are little clay balls. And what we do is we just let them sit. We were talking about this earlier. We just let it all sit here and break down. And then what Brandon will do, Brandon, take a scoop of that. Take a scoop of that after it's been sitting there for a while and then just trickle it in the box. And we just rerun this muck. Because you know you're gonna have a little bit of gold in that muck. And it'll clean it off. You'll be able to see gems, a piece of rutilated quartz. And you'll be able to see all your gems. Look at sapphire. But now everything comes out really clean. And you can just sit here and pick out gems if you got gems in your area. Or else you'll know that you've got you know, all that gold out of this dirt down here. Again, we only do that, you know, every few, every uh, 20 minutes or so, you know, grab a scoop of this stuff and clean it. That's that muck. You know, it's this nasty, nasty muck that we will not break down, plain and simple. It will not break down in a header box. Maybe after about an hour or so. Okay guys, so uh, we ran, I don't know, we ran probably about 30, 35 buckets. There's still a little dirt over there, but I wanted to shut down before a thunderstorm came by because I want to do a clean out and then we'll go back to running. But I wanted to show you real quick, when you shut down your unit, do what I call concreting your mat. We're gonna tilt it and all the water is gonna run down one side. Oops. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna tilt my unit all my water is going to go over to one side and down. And all my water is going to drain out. And now what that does is that concretes up my mat. And what that means is, is now when I pull my mats out, there's not water washing back and forth in these mats. And it's solid. I don't have to worry about the gold going anywhere. All right. So let me show you about tuning. So the water is almost a little too fast here, and this is Razorback right there. I see a little bit of black sand, I'm okay with that. But here, see this downdraft? There's a little bit of black sand, I'm okay with that. What I really like to see, see this right here? Well, that's a Razorback, and that has that good little buildup of fine black sand. Same thing, this downdraft right here. And that downdraft right there. So what you want to do is you want to tune my lowest velocity mat in here is going to be my downdraft. I want to make sure that I see a little bit of fine black sand in my downdraft. Yes, the Razorback looks 
impacted. What are all these rocks doing here? That's okay, just forget about it. They're active, they're moving around. The gold is falling behind there. Same thing here. Look right here, look at that Razorback. Look at all those rocks there, don't worry about it. As long as this mat is tuned, then you're good. Now, I was talking to these guys over here and I came up with a good little sort of way to describe this. We've got all these different mats going through our sluice, all different velocities, all different capture zones, all different size, whatever. It's just like putting out 50 mouse traps. You're gonna put one mouse trap out with peanut butter, one mouse, mouse trap up with apples, one you're gonna put with grains, because you don't know which one that mouse is gonna eat. So the same thing here. We've got all these, all these different capture zones where maybe a flat piece of gold wants to sit here. Maybe a round piece of gold wants to sit here. Maybe it's a piece of wire gold. Maybe it's a square piece, who knows. But it's all, they've all got different hydraulic shapes to them or hydrodynamic shapes, I guess you could say. So the water's pushing them differently and a big flat piece of gold has a big flip, flip, flip. It needs a different place to hide more so than a teeny little piece of round gold. It's gonna hide in a different spot. So I've got 40 different slots in here, all different velocities, all different depths, all different kinds of exchanges. Someplace along this line, that piece of gold is gonna get caught. You got that? So we're gonna do a quick clean out, probably run it through the multi sleuth, see what we got. All right, so what I wanna do is we shut this down and what I want to show you is what this little flap does. It creates this deadening pool area right here, which acts almost like a little fluid bed. You've got a piece of moss, and then under the moss, there's mat under the moss. So I'm going to move this flap out. I've taken the bolts out. And you can see what it looks like here. Can you block the sunlight from here? There you go. All right, so now you can see what this looks like. It's weird because what's going to end up happening is you're going to have rocks in here that are going to sort of lift that mat up a little bit. So you sometimes have to play with it. Sometimes during a run, I'll flip that mat up and let these rocks kind of go out. But what I did, we get this question a lot about big gold. And so I threw in a couple little nuggets and you can see them right there. You can see the nuggets sitting right in that moss, right in that fluid zone. There's two pieces. Hey, hand me a stick, something I can use as a pointer. All right, so I got a little pointer here. Where's my pointer stick, see it? All right, so there's a little nugget right there. There's a big nugget right here. There's another nugget right here. There's another piece of gold sitting right here. I can see gold back over here. So you can see that those nuggets, they don't even move out of here. Now the other thing I did is I took a, I took a little bit of super, super fine, like 150 mesh gold, and I put it into here as well, because there's not much gold in this dirt. So we should be able to see some fine gold in here. That's a cool little nugget there. Again, but I wanted to prove that point that, you know, you'll have, like this is a topaz. Up in this deadening zone, you'll have, if you have any big nuggets, they'll usually be right here or right in this first six to eight inches. And then as we go down, we'll see finer and finer gold as we go down. Again, the mousetrap theory. All right, so let me show you why I don't like to classify too much. See these little pieces of gold here? Those little pieces of gold are sitting on top of this 1 8 inch screen. Now these are some of the pieces I added, but you can see that they would not go through that classifier. You know, you may only find one once a month, but how much time you gotta spend looking through this stuff? And unfortunately, we don't have a lot of concentrate, but I mean, there's a little ruby sitting there. And when you go down this small, man, it was hard to see. Them. Especially if this thing, you know, was half full, it'd be almost impossible. That's why we don't like to classify right there. We want that stuff running through our sleeves. And these are actually the concentrates from the mat. 
All right, I really don't have a lot of concentrates, but I figured I'd just go ahead and just run them through the multi-sluice real quick. Why not? Again, I wanted to test out this little battery. Normally, I'm just running a washer mat. Normally, I would classify down to 12 or 20 mesh. I'm just playing around today, so I took it to eighth of an inch because I don't have a lot of concentrates, so I think I'll be okay. We'll find out. This is that stripping mat. That's all it is for is just stripping. Ripping all that black sand out. That's it. So I'm pretty much done. It's that quick. So now I'm going to shut it off. All right, well, before I pull this mat out, let me show you what I'm talking about here. Again, this upper portion should be extremely turbulent, and I should have almost zero black sand, but I should be able to see gold. And I can see gold in there, I can see fine gold in there, and there's a little piece right there. And I'll see a little bit of gold in here. And as I go down on this thing, I'll see less and less and less gold and a little bit more black sand as this sluice calms down. But anyways, I wanted to show you the fine gold that was caught in the mini after running through multi-sluice. So let's wash this out. All right, so let me explain. We took half a ton of material. We took the half ton down to about two cups. We took the two cups through the multi-sluice down to about two tablespoons. And now I'm just gonna pan this out. Again, tap, 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 tap. I'm moving the pan, tapping, and you'll see all the gold go in the corner over here. Spread it out. And now I added fine gold just to test it. And you can see that gold in there. Let me get the camera here. All right. So I added uh, those four or five big pickers. There's one picker in here. The rest of them I pulled out by hand. And then I added some super fine 100 to 200 mesh gold. And you can see it in here. Let me sort of spread it out for you a little bit. So you can get a better view of it. It's probably about half a gram of 100 to 200 mesh gold in there. So once again, she performed just perfectly. All the way getting those big nuggets down to that super fine gold. Again, multiple mouse traps, multiple mouse traps. Different size mice, different mouse, mouse with different taste. That's what we're that's what we're looking for. We're looking for exposure zones that vary <clears throat> so I can catch big gold and small gold at the same time. <clears throat> 